Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and this video is about how to install Windows 7 32-bit operating system into a virtual box. The outcomes for this video would be to 1. Create a guest virtual computer in VirtualBox. All the settings required. Install Windows 7. Install Windows 7 32-bit as a VirtualBox virtual computer. Update Windows 7 and finally install Virtual Guest Editions. Requirements would be a Windows 7 ISO file with a product key. I don't have a CD here, just an ISO file, but you can create a CD from an ISO file if needed. An internet connection and enough memory to run both Windows 7 and the host operating system. One gigabyte for Windows 7 plus the required memory for your host operating system. So normally it's around minimum of two gigabytes and it would be nice if your computer had virtualization hardware support. Most of the computers nowadays do. Additional info, there's two from Microsoft, installing and reinstalling and frequently asked questions, FAQ. And then there's another one from another site. You can take a look at it if you need to. And disclaimer, while I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that it'll work with all combinations, hardware and software out there. So I've been asked to include disclaimer if you wish. You can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Here's the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. And I'm going to create, I'm going to create a new machine here, Windows 7 32-bit. Click on New. And I'm going to call it Win 7 32B for bit. It's Microsoft Windows. Windows 7, it's taking that, well, there's also Windows 7 64-bit, but that's not going to be on this, uh, that's not going to be this machine. So I'm going to click on Next, and it recommends 512 megabytes of memory. I'm going to go all the way up to 1024. That's pretty much what I recommend for any Windows 7. Click Next. It's going to ask to create a virtual hard drive, yes. And I'm going to take the default, VDI and dynamically allocated. The reason I picked dynamically allocated is it doesn't use all the disk space or storage space until you actually load it onto the virtual machine. Click Next. I'm going to double this to 50 gigabytes and the reason for that being is this machine may be, it's a virtual machine, but it may be around for a little bit of time so I may be doing some more things with it. You can always change this though it's not it's not hard, but it's not a bunch of clicks either, or, or a set of clicks. You just have to go and use the command line from the command line virtual manager. Click Create. So now I'm going to do it from an ISO file. So I click on Storage, then go to the CD DVD, and I'm going to choose the CD DVD disk file. And actually, I'm going to choose an ISO file. And in this case, in my case, it would be under Projects, Videos, Windows Virtual Machines, Win 732-bit. And here it is. Click Open. Click OK. Check Display here. It says Video memory is 27 megabytes. You could give it a little more if you want. I'm going to leave both of these blank. I'm just going to keep everything as a minimum here. And I'm going to add a description. And it's basically going to be Windows 7 32-bit to date, which is... Uh, 12, 30, 13. Click OK and the next thing uh, is to actually start the actual install. With the Windows 7 Virtual Machine created in VirtualBox Manager, next step is to start the machine. So once it's selected, Windows 732 bit settings and I'm going to start it. And you'll see Windows is loading files from the ISO file. And 
So it says a language to install. You pick your language here. And English, United States, and keyboard or input method is U.S. And you've got choices here, but I, this is uh, a U.S. location. Then click Next once you make your choices there. And install now. And here's the license terms. You go ahead and read it. But uh, if you're familiar with it, you accept the license terms. Basically, you have to pay for each license from uh, Microsoft. And in this case, what type of installation do I want? Upgrade or custom? Install a new copy of Windows. Got 50 gigabyte hard drive. Click Next. And it's going to trundle along. Of course, the computer will restart several times. And you should have your uh, product key available to you. So once I'm through expanding the Windows files, installing the features, now we're going through installing updates. It's kind of hard to believe that all the updates have been installed already. But we're going to restart. And you can click restart now to get it to hurry up. Now it says press any key to boot from the CD or DVD. Don't press any keys because we don't want it to boot again from the install. Now we're updating the registry settings for the Windows registry. Set up the starting services. A service would be something like a network service to access the network authorization service to uh, so you can log in. Now we're in the completing installation phase. Okay, this is the second restart. Setup will continue after restarting your computer. Again, do not press uh, any key because we're not going to boot from the CD or DVD. We're in the middle of an install. Now the setup is preparing your computer for first use. Checking the video. Don't make any video settings currently. Uh, you should make all video settings after you have virtual guest additions from VirtualBox installed. And I'm going to type in the computer name, the same one I used before but all in lowercase this time. And then click Next. And then it requires a password hint. You put your own hint there. I just had to put something there. Now it's a product key. This is what you pay for. I may, uh... Now it says automatically activate Windows when I'm online. Now generally what I like to do is not check this if I'm in doing a Windows install unless I'm doing a whole bunch of uh, or, uh, quite a number of them at the same time, I like to make sure that everything is working before I uh, activate Windows. So let me enter the product key. Click Next after entering the product key. So the next thing to ask is, uh, use rec is about the Windows automatically. I like to have it do it automatically. 
this is going to be a, a virtual machine. I've got a valid license for it, so I'm just going to use a recommended settings. In my case, I'm on Eastern Daylight Time. You can, wherever your time code is at, or whatever time you're at. And this is correct time. Click Next. Computers Connect Windows apply the correct network settings. And I'm going to uh, pick Work Network here. You may want to choose Home Network. Finally, we've got the personalized settings. It's setting up personalized settings for Windows Desk Update. So here I've got the Windows 7 machine. Make sure I've got all my updates done. That would be under Control Panel Updates. System and security. Yep. Firewall, Windows firewall. Actually, when we're talking about security, you should have some kind of antivirus program since it's Windows. I'm going to check for updates. Once it's fully updated, then I'm going to install virtual guest editions. And after virtual guest editions, I'm going to play around with the video settings and get it to fill the screen. Now here it says 100 download install updates for your computer. 140 important updates are available and four optional updates are available. Now we're not going to watch as 140 updates get installed. Essentially what I'm going to do is install the updates these right here, select them, click OK, and then install all the important updates. And if you've ever worked with Windows, you know that uh, it takes a while to get this computer, all these updates installed, and the computer restarted. After downloading 136 updates, Windows 7 begins the process of installing the 136 updates. Come back when they're fully installed. Here we have the updates completed. And we're ready to go ahead and start Windows 7. And the message comes up, uh, Windows could not install important updates. Let's click, see how to fix the problem. And 11 important updates. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and install these updates. When it comes back, I'm going to go ahead and install the VirtualBox Guest Editions. Now one thing you notice here is installing Internet Explorer 11 for Windows 7. In the last set of updates I saw that it installed Internet Explorer 10. Oh well. So now the updates were successfully installed so we'll restart now. Of course, I have to go through the configuring Windows updates, and that's going to take a little additional time. Well, there's one thing I forgot to do before restarting, and I'll do it right after this restart. You don't want to hit the key to uh, boot from the CD because it's still set for the Windows install, Windows 7 install. CD. So here I am. 
log on after the updates. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here in devices and where it says CD so I'm going to choose host drive E. Now before it was sitting on the right here but now it's on host drive E and then I'm going to insert guest edition CD image and right here up comes the VBox Windows Editions EXE so I'm going to click right here yes next we'll just take all the default settings I'm not going to do directory support experience uh, you can try and play with that if you wish I just want to have a very stable machine here I'm just going to click install again install comes up and so I'm going to choose to reboot now and click on finish Ask for the password. Now with uh, VirtualBox Guest Editions, we we'll to make sure that I'm out of resized guest display. And so that's all there is to installing Windows 7 32-bit into VirtualBox. Thank you.